Hello, um, today I am going to be making two different types of old-fashioned grandmother's lard soap. Um, one I'm going to be doing CP, which is cold process, where there's no cooking involved, but the soap is not ready immediately. You have to let it sit and cure for a long period of time. Um, and it depends on the oils that you use, how long you need to let it sit. You know, sometimes it's four weeks. Four, you know, so you have to just kind of um, see how it goes. The HP soap, which is hot process, I'm going to be cooking today, is the basically the same soap, and I'm going to be cooking it in the crock pot. Now, I am going to add in stearic acid, and I have my stearic acid here in this little container, and I just dip out what I need, um, and I think I got it from Soper's Choice. And it makes a bar hard, so it helps a bar, bar get really, really hard. And some people don't use it. They say you don't need it. I've just always used it. So I'm, uh, I don't use it in all my soaps, but I use it in some of them. And so I'm just going to use it today in the hot processed soap, but not the cold processed. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I need to measure out how much I need. And you don't have to use this. Um, like I said, this is just something I do. Um, I add in... Um, two ounces of this instead of two ounces of the lard. And I'm gonna put it in first. I've already heated the crock pot. So I'm gonna just spread it out in there so it will start melting, put the lid on. And stearic acid takes a little while to melt, so it may take a little while. And you just have to, um, I usually do it ahead of time before I add my other oils. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure out the lard that I'm going to use for the cold process soap while I'm waiting on that. And I'm going to tear out my, my scale. And what that means is uh, when you set the, the container on there, you don't want the scale to weigh the container. You want it to start at zero with the container on there so that you're only getting the weight of what you're putting in. So I've done that. I have two containers of lard, one that I've been using and one that uh, that is new. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. I'm going to, going to need 76 ounces, making a really big batch. So I'm going to put that in. What I usually do is I just scrape out some of it. Um, I'm going to save this container to store other things in. So these are great for that and I'll finish um, scraping it out a little later. I have my other container of lard. I'm hoping you can see that. Yes. So, I am going to dip it out of here. Like I said, this is a new container. And a lot of people don't like using lard. And there are soaps that I have um, that I don't use lard in. I have organic soaps. And then I have a soap that is not organic, but it uses palm and things like that. And... So therefore, I don't I don't use lard in it because some customers don't want lard. They don't want an animal product. So, um, and that's fine. Uh, lard does make a really really nice bar of soap, but I do understand the concerns with it. You know, um, animals are fed all kinds of things these days, and it, you know, it's in their skin and and their meat, and it, it actually would be in the lard that you make from the fats. So let's see. Um, Okay, I only need a little bit more. Let's see if that's enough. Okay, I have um, four pounds, which is 32. 42, uh, I'm sorry, four pounds, which is 40, 50, 64. 74, 75, 76, 77, which is too much. 
only need I'm getting the two confused okay for this one I do need the whole 78 because I'm not adding anything extra all right so that's four pounds Actually, 79. Should have figured that up before I started. But I know that I, I'm doing 78 ounces. So. And that's exactly 78. Okay, 4 pounds, 14 ounces. And I'm looking for... All right, um, when you're soaping, you keep all your nasty, not nasty, but all your rags that are like old that you don't want to use in the kitchen or the bathroom, you keep them over in a drawer and you use them for soaping. They're great for wiping up oils. Please don't throw them away. Enough, they're falling all apart, of course. Probably need to throw them away. But even towels that have been bleached out or got, my husband likes to take some of them outside sometimes, wipe around, dry something off or whatever, and then... They'll get thrown down and the sun will bleach them. I don't throw them away. I put them in a drawer, the drawer, um, actually under my dryer. And I use those for soaking. I lay it across my, um, lay it across my soaps when I get them in the mold. All right, today I'm going to be trying out something a little different I haven't done before. Uh, normally I wrap, I put, I line my soap molds with wax paper. Today I've, Got, got this um, shelf liner paper that I'm going to try. This soap is for me. But I'm going to try it and see how it works. Um, that way I don't have to keep using the wax paper over and over. But someone did say um, you can actually get little thin pieces of plastic from Lowe's. Like sheets of it. And you cut it and you just slip them in. And then you have a permanent one because the plastic's not going to... Um, tear up the way the the wax paper does and you end up having to throw it away and my thing is I hate having to keep cutting new pieces because you have to have them a certain size exactly and I just don't like having to do that so I am going to try the plastic for, for now oh I don't know what that was that's that's somebody's hunting or something I am going to try this okay so we have the stirric acid for the um hot process that you cook and it's it's still melting I see it um it's not melted yet and then over here I have my lard already measured out, uh, 76 ounces that I'm going to actually put in. Um, I'm just going to do cold process and put it in the mold and not cook it. Okay, now, I don't know what I do with my, where I put my recipe. Okay, here it goes. All right, and I do use... Um, I'll put this up here for you to see. I use um, soapcalc.net is where you can go and put in the types of oils that you like and it will print out the recipe for you and it'll tell you exactly how much lye you need to use, exactly how much water. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get my container. These kind of containers work great for mixing your lye together. I'm going to go ahead and tear out the scale so that it is on zero. Um, I actually just use uh, tap water. I used to boil the water and but we have um, really good well water and it's going to boil it's going to boil it when you're cooking it anyway so and i've never had a problem using the tap water so that's what i use uh, it just cuts out a lot of time from having to boil the water and let it cool and so i've just i've kind of quit with that i went back i used to do this and then i stopped because some people were saying oh you need to boil the water but so many soapers don't and, and there's no danger in just using the tap water um to make soap with all right so i'm going to measure out my water Probably don't have enough. Okay. 
Wait. Oops. It, okay. So I have 26, 29.2. Actually, oh, actually, you only need 29.4. I mean, 29.6. 29.6. And it doesn't matter if you get a little more or a little less one way or the other. It really doesn't matter. There we go. All right. Okay, so now um, I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to get my bowl. I use these types of bowls for measuring out my oils, my essential oils, fragrance oils, and my lye. So I'm going to... Tear the scale out so it's on zero again with the bowl. And I'm actually going to need 11 ounces of lye. Now, lye is very caustic and it can burn you. So you have to be really careful with lye. Um, I've been using the Essential Depot lye, but I am now going to be purchasing me, my lye. And I'm actually going to be selling lye. So if anyone's interested, you, you'll be able to get a lot cheaper. Um, just, just let me know. And that's going to be coming up probably in the next, um, probably next three to four weeks. But right now I'm trying to use up the Essential Depot lye that I had, that I'd already purchased. All right, so lye's caustic, back to that. If you're not used to dealing with lye, please wear gloves, wear goggles. Um, some people wear long sleeve shirts. And that way you're making sure that you, um, you don't burn yourself. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm not saying that I won't get burned because I could, um, but I just don't really function well with the gloves, and I'm just taking a risk by not wearing um, the gloves and, and the, the, the equipment to help keep me safer from the lie. But just be careful and use gloves if you're... I would use gloves to begin with anyway until you get uh, used to it. But I'm going to go ahead and measure this. Um, it needs to have a well-ventilated area. I do have the window open and I usually turn the bathroom fan on. Let me do that now because once I start dealing, uh, today I'm not dealing with the essential oils but they bother my husband so I, I turn the fan on so that he doesn't have to quite smell it. I don't have quite enough. I should have had everything out and ready. Alright, I have another bottle. I need 11 ounces. Uh, I just usually pour really, really slowly because I don't want to have to put anything back in. Almost there. Oop. Oop, there we go. 11 ounces. use a, a whisk like this to actually mix it together. I'm going to just move the skill out of the way. Here's the water. Um, I do take a spatula to, um, to scrape any of it out. Sometimes it'll stick. If you wipe your bowl with a fabric softener sheet, then um, it, it won't stick in there. At least the first time, if you use the bowl a couple times, if I'm making like a bunch, it will end up sticking. But you just slowly pour it in. And see, there's a little bit left over. And I immediately put this in the sink and run water in it so that I'm not having to worry about it having lye in it and one of the children grabbing it. Okay, so. Now take the whisk and I'll just give it a nice stir. And you can see that it is cloudy. It has a cloudy look in there. I'm hoping you can see it. That means that it's not dissolved all the way. It's giving off some fumes. What I usually like to do is put it over by the window. And I leave it over there until um till I'm ready to use it. Okay, now check back on this. Um I think this is um is ready. Go ahead and get this out of the way. Dissolve. <coughs> Keep it up here. I 
I'm going to go ahead and measure out the lard for the hot process batch. Just gonna put that container. I usually use this one, but since I've got that already in it, I'm not going to um, mess with it. Actually, I could. Oh, I don't have to do that. I could actually put it on here. Tear, um, tear it out to zero, and then I'm actually just going to take two ounces out of it because that's all I need to take out of it. And you can see you can actually use the scale that way. See that I took out four ounces. That's way too much. Took out uh, 2.7. Uh, actually, a little bit more. That's 1.9. Okay, actually I took out two ounces, so I'm going to save that for the next batch, but I actually took out two ounces, so this is exactly what I need, 76 ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. What I do is you don't want it to plop, so I kind of put it against the edge and let it kind of hit the edge and slide down. And then I kind of, once you get it going, you it'll easily slide in. Now, you do want to make sure you get out most of the oils. I try to get all of it, but that's impossible. But you do want to make sure you get out most of them because the measurement told you how, many, how much oil you needed. And, you know, you don't want to end up leaving four ounces or something in your container. Now, if you leave a little bit, it's not a big deal. the scale put the lid on this and let this um heat the um the lard up okay now i'm gonna go ahead and tear this back out because i do need the 78 ounces for the cold process so 78 ounces is what i usually do this was 76 ounces of lard two ounces of stearic acid this one's going to be completely um 78 ounces of lard four pounds which is 64 ounces it's probably too much but 64 ounces mom what mom, baby what we rode a helicopter you rode a helicopter yep your daddy Way too much, or you didn't weigh enough? I weigh too much. You weigh too much to get on it? Yep. That's what I did. I get on the help cutter. I weigh too much, and then I got on it. That's what I did. Then we went real high. I didn't cry forever. Okay. I didn't cry on the help cutter. But then what's on her out? She's in there somewhere. Can I her play with me? Yeah, y'all can play. Can I go tell her to play? You can go tell her. This is what she's doing first. Like some prize. What you got? Ta-da! Oh, gloves. Good job. That's football. 
Okay, I'm back. Um, I went ahead and mixed up the lye for this other batch and I have it over there cooling. This one is actually ready. You can kind of see that it's nice and clear now, so it's ready. Um, I did heat the lard up just a little bit so it wouldn't be quite so, so solid. And I have my stick blender plugged in and ready. And I have my lye water ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour this in slowly so there's no splash. You know, make sure you're slowly pouring it in. It's going to start melting the uh, light, the soaps, the oils um, right away. Mommy's making soap. What is it? No, not now. All right, thank you. All right, and then I'm going to just stir it around a little, and I'm going to use a stick blender to go ahead and start blending it. The heat from the lye is going to melt the rest of the lard. Be careful, don't let it splash up on you. And I'm not you, I don't usually make um cold process soap so th I, I made it before but I, this is not something I usually do I usually make hot process soap so I'm used to working in the actual hot pot instead of working in a plastic container you to be able to see. Let's bring it around a little bit. Oops. Should be able to see it a little. Um, bring it over. Now you can't see it at all. Let's see if we can adjust. There we go. You want to actually bring it to what's called a trace which is where all the oils and the lye water are mixed together and it starts to thicken. And this is not, not ready. I do actually want to see some lard around the edges and of course that was all weighed in. So I actually want to put it down in there. And if I feel the sides, it's really nice, nice and hot. Ooh. And you want to try to, um, just pulling the stick blender out of the mixture and putting it back in because it'll create little bubbles in it and that's not really what you want.
takes a lot longer than what I remember. Because when you're doing, I guess it doesn't really take a lot longer because you're not having to cook it. But the other one, um, you don't have to blend anywhere near this uh, long. <laughs> by any means. Ooh, careful, say it this will, will burn, so please wear gloves. My skin is um doesn't really react to it all that much. If I get just splattered a little, I wipe it off and it may burn just a little but it doesn't burn down into my skin or create sores or anything. But um, just be really, really careful if you are dealing with lye because it can be, be very dangerous. And never, ever leave it around children. And walk away unattended. Make sure you're there and then children weren't inside I wouldn't have this bowl this close to the edge and I can feel my stick blender getting really warm still and this is actually good for um if you're making CP and you want to decorate it with different colors and designs that's why people usually use the cold process soap is because it's workable where hot process soap is it's workable but it's it's a lot less workable <laughs> start this pot. I'm going to turn it on low. It's um, nice and melted. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. I want you to be able to see the clear oil was just immediately starting the uh, saponification which is the soap process. And that's because these were hot
once again go ahead and make sure that you rinse out your my container. Okay. I'm gonna switch this over here. You can see that it's already it's already getting thick and but the oils are still on top so I'm gonna have to blend it. If I can take you in a little already there are no oils are left but it's it's not almost a trace which traces when you can dribble some across the top and it'll leave a line or a pool you'll be able to see it piled on the top it's not quite there almost though I can actually feel it thickening up thickening up getting thicker and this one if you don't get it real thick it's okay because the heat it into um, Trace. I mean, because I'm already at Trace, so see, you can see now. See, I don't know if you can see it on there, but it's leaving a little path where I'm dribbling it. Drizzling it, not dribbling, drizzling. I'm just going to stick it in a little bit more. see hopefully you can see where it's leaving little lines and like I said I could stop now but the the more you do it the the uh, less time it has to cook so because it'll already be through that stage so I want to help it thicken up as much as possible before I stop and stick blender up because it will go flying everywhere. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there. You can actually see, I hope, how it's... see it's like piled how it piles up get back there all right so I'm gonna do I'm gonna let this one cook and this just shows you how how high the hot the lie gets you can actually see it's kind of melted I don't know if you can see but it's melting the ends of it um if I buy another, buy one, it will be a stainless steel one. This one I got at a yard sale for just a couple dollars, so I wasn't really worried about it. All right, we're going to go back over here to this one. I'll take you in a little bit, and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Head and still not thickened up. What I want to do is just kind of see the difference 
between the lather, the texture, how long the bar lasts, the hard. Okay, I brought you back. I'm sorry about that, but my battery went dead. So I had to actually charge it up a little bit before um, I could bring you back. While um, you were gone, I took a little bit of the lard cold process soap and I mixed it with some little orange. I'm, I'm playing with mixing. I'm really not even sure how to mix colors, so we're not going to go into all that. But I got these nice cute little pumpkin molds and got these little ice trays here that are silicone and I poured up four little bars of soap. I just want to play with it, see how well they come out. I'll use them to, uh, at my sink in the mornings to wash my face. And then these um, is also, I don't know if you can see that, but it's also a pumpkin. And I found those and I wanted to um, play with those and I'm about messed it up. I wanted to play around with those, just see how well they come out and, and I'll just use those um, in the shower. Um, also, my um, husband uses um, soap, shading soap that comes in these little tubs. And what I did is I filled it up with some lard soap and he'll put it in his little shaving mug and use his little brush. And we're gonna see how that, um, how that works out for him to use. Okay, so let's look at this one and make sure you can see it. Um, this one is starting to lava up. And I'm gonna bring it in so you can kinda see what I'm talking about. So I need to um, go ahead and stir it, stir it down. It's still a little, um, it's not cooking right here, but it is starting to lava around the edges, so I want to stir that and get it back down in the pot, stir it back together. It's starting to separate, which happens. Um, so I may need to stick blend this back together, but I'm just going to stir it for right now because some of it's not, that part there is not starting to cook yet. Stir it back down, put the lid back on it, and then I'll watch it. I'm going to stir it really well though, get them incorporated together, that way that hot, hot soap that's already cooking is mixed in with the other one. Like I said, I may have to stick blend it back together, but we, we will see. And I am in love with these um, big wood sticks. I mean big wood spoons. I found these at Agar Supply and they work really, really well for mixing soaps. And when you use them over time, they start to not look so great, but they, they work fine. I haven't had these all that long, but all right, so you can see that's looking kind of like applesauce. Set the colors a little wrong, but it, it's looking, it's kind of like the consistency of applesauce. All right, so I'm gonna give that a quick around the edges, around the top, wrap around the top. Always wipe it off with a spoon. You don't have to. Um, it just kind of keeps it because you can keep stirring it, and if you just keep leaving it on the spoon, it starts to harden on there. And, and I just stick both of those back in there. And I'm going to put the lid back on that and we're going to let that continue to cook. Now, let's take you back over and I cannot move because my battery is dead. So, let's take you back to this soap. It is starting to thicken up. Just going to keep stirring it some more. Um, now, if you have a silicone mold like the ones I was using for the pumpkins, you can pour it right in and it's not really a concern. But my mold, the way I have it lined, it has cut edges where if you pour it in when it's too thin, it will run. It will run through, and I have had that happen. Before, way back, like I said, I used to make a little bit of cold process soap and just kind of quit with it. Um, but I want to kind of start pursuing that side of it because there are lots of people who want the, fan the fancy soaps that smell with fragrances. You know, 
pumpkin pie and spice, gingerbread or what? My little little boy coming in. What is it? Where's your football? It's in my bedroom. The bedroom, the windows are open, the blinds are up, the light's shining in there. Go look and you'll see there's nothing to be scared of. Okay, it's not dark in there. Go check. I'm going to check and you're going to call. Go check. Thank you. I'm still worried that this is not um, thick enough to pour in. One thing that I have learned from today that I forgot is that um what's not open? The blind ain't open. Yeah, one of the blinds is. Go get your football. You know where the footballs are? Yeah. Open. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're fine. Go tell Honor to come get it for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, anyway, you do need to make sure that you keep gloves on because we're dealing with the cold process. It is thinner. I found that, you know, if you're dealing with pouring, it likes to get on you. So, I would recommend having gloves on. I'm going to let this sit because I think the longer it sits, it's going to thicken up. So, uh, get that off of there, and then I'm going to go back and take a look at the hot process up for a minute, because I think I'm going to have to stick blend this back together, because it's kind of getting um, separating a little bit too much, so getting more of a mashed potato stage, which is what they call it. But I'm going to go ahead and stick it back on the back again. So I'm getting a thin separation of some of the oils. Notice it's it's really thick now, like like mashed potatoes. It's what's called a mashed potato stage. Sorry about the bumping. Okay, leave that here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on this. Um, let this continue to cook. So it went through trace and it went through what's called an um, applesauce stage and now it's gone through the mashed potato stage. And you'll see that there are different stages that it goes through. So I'm going to go back to this. It's thickening up but still not as thick as I would like to see it before I pour it in here.
I'm going to go ahead and um, stick blend it a little bit more. And normally I would have to clean my stick blender if I'm doing different types of soaps. Normally I try to do the same types at one time. But both of these are large soaps, even though I'm doing whoop, cold process and pot process. This is starting to thicken up now. Quite where I want it, but it's thickening. before when I did the whole process and I poured it in it kind of came out the ends of the corners so I want to thicken it enough that I know that it's not going to just be running out there's some little something off of there that I don't want in there bucket with a lid would probably, I mean a handle would have been great, a little bucket with a handle. So I may invest in that. So these are just ones that I measure out my oils in before I pour them in the crock pot. And that you're actually doing this in here. I think we're getting where we need to be. And again, you don't want to raise it up to the point that it splashes out. did it. That's why you need to wear safety stuff so that you're not worried about it coming up in your eyes and stuff. And I believe I'm getting to the point where I might be starting to get too thick. Just a little bit more. And once again, soap is just something you kind of have to get a feel for. Temperature can be different. You may have to end up stick blending longer than before, or longer than you thought, and different oils. Different oils can cause you to have to. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up because I'm not going to use this again. I usually just try to get of it off because it makes the clean up easier. I'll just scrape it down. Okay. We're just going to leave that sitting for just a little bit while I tend to the other side. 
and I've had you on the other one the whole time. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I was stick blending that. Got it nice and stick blended. I think it's thick enough now that I'm going to be able to work with it. And go back. That one starting to rise up again. So we're just going to, you can see that it's starting to get a little bit of a shine. Clearness on top. That's where we want it to be. I'm just going to give this a good stir. And also you have to learn your crock pots because some crock pots cook hotter than others and you may have to turn it from low to off if it gets too hot or you may have to turn it to high if it's one of those crock pots that just doesn't quite get hot enough. And still, this um, this is still has lye, lye in it, so you want to be careful. Try not to get it on you. And I would, to begin with, I would wear gloves just to make sure. And I would recommend before you ever do your first batch or before you ever make your first batch that you do some research on lye safety. You know, things that you need to do to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe. Because I don't want anyone to get burnt. Okay, you can see that it, I kind of blended it back together. I mean, stirred it back together. It's nice and smooth. It still looks like mashed potatoes. So I'm going to let it continue to cook. this around the edge get it back in there let's get around the edges where I make a mess I just try not to get it all over the lid so that when I'm handling the lid or laying it down I'm not constantly putting lye everywhere okay so I'll let that cook again this time I'm not going to forget to bring you back. Alright, so you can see this. It's thickening, thickening up. Still not quite thick enough that I feel comfortable pouring it in this. Now if you had a regular silicone mold, it would be perfect. But I just don't want it to run through the sides and kind of come out. So I'm just going to stir it a little bit more. And again, I'm touching it. It's not burning me, but you really probably want to make sure you have gloves on so that you're not having to worry about coming in contact. And I'm not used to doing, like I said before, this cold process, which is the soap you don't cook. You actually let it cure itself out until there's no active lye in it. It just takes longer for it to kind of do its thing. When this is, the hot process is done, it will be ready. The only thing is it'll be a little soft. So you'll want to let them harden up some before you use it because if not, it just kind of uses up really quickly in the shower or the, um, when you're washing but it is ready to use, and I have used it. I will usually take a little piece and go ahead and wash my hands. Um, I let the dr soap dry in the pot, and when I clean up all the stuff that I've used, I don't add any soap at all. The soap that's in the pot actually is what I use to wash everything. I'm not sure if the steric had little specks in it or something. I'll have to check it because there's little specks. Not all the way through, but I keep seeing a couple. Something I don't want. And 
And that's why a lot of people, I probably already said this, but a lot of people do the cold process because it gives you so much time to work with your colors and your designs because it stays fluid for so long. Where hot process, once it starts cooling down, it starts thickening up immediately. And you, sometimes you have to, depending on the oils you use or how long you let it go cook, you may have to kind of plop it, as they say, in the mold just to get it out of the pot real quickly to to hurry up and mold it. Where usually, cold process, you don't have to do that. But then they do say that oils, some of the fragrance oils, will cause it to thicken up quickly. I think some of the colorants. So... soakers that do the cold process usually know which ones they're going to have to hurry with and which ones they're not. And you know what I was thinking is I probably should have made this one with the stearic acid too or at least um, made this one where it doesn't have the stearic acid so I really could compare them but um, I'm going to see, see how this goes. So I'm just really not sure what's going on with the little... Thickening, thickening up more. Might be about to the point. Now so I can actually see the lines across the top so I know that it's actually thickening, thickening up enough. And I could put my stick blender back in here and blend it. I'm just not going to do that. It'd get all over it. I'm just going to and the more you stir it and work with it the thicker it gets. So you can see that you don't really have to have a stick blender to do this but it will make it um, go a lot quicker. You may have to stir and stir and stir, and some people don't use stick blenders. It just makes the process easier. The first time I ever made cold process soap, which was the first soap I had, I've ever made, I didn't know what I was doing. I think I didn't let it get thick enough. I wasn't doing colors or designs or anything. I was just making a simple soap. I just wanted to make soap. So, and I don't even remember the oils I used. It was a combination of oils. I think it was a recipe I found online. And I used a pan, lined it. I can't remember if it was wax paper. Probably was. And poured it in. Let it sit and sit and sit and it never would harden up so what I'm thinking is that I don't know either I did something wrong because measurements have to be precise so you really need to pay attention with your measurements you can't just you know add too uh, much of one thing or too little of another you have to really pay attention to your measurements when you're working with soap but anyway, I was really disappointed because I had to throw the soap in the trash. It's not good for anything, and I didn't know what to do with it. I might could have fixed it or rebatched it. Kind of know things about some of that now, but um, I'm making a mess. That's what I said once again. You're dealing with cold process soap. It's a little different than when you're dealing with hot process. I 
gonna make sure that I get this on. Blended enough. And I may have some some uh, soapers that make cold process soap comment and say, oh, it was been stirred enough. Um, but my, my main concern, like I said, is that the, the mold has little pieces on the ends. And normally the hot process soap is not a, doesn't uh, mess it up at all. It doesn't run through or anything. So I, want, I just want to make sure that this one's just not going to run through. It's getting thick. And you do one thing you do want to be careful with is touching your face or parts of your body, even when you have the gloves on. Because if you get the lye on your, even the soap that's cooking, it still has lye in it, you get it on your fingers. And then you start rubbing your face or your eyes, you, you can be in a mess. So just be careful whether you wear gloves or not, which I do recommend gloves. Be careful, you know, that you're not touching things. I'll check this um, lard and the stearic acid when I'm done. Because normally I don't make a really white bar. So maybe you don't usually see it. I think I'm going to stir the hot process one more time and then I think I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Still nice and hot. Make sure I'm still videotaping. In. Drinking didn't drink any of it. Okay, let's take you back over here. Kind of see if you can see it. Take the lid off. You can see it's getting kind of an opaque look about it on the top. Not sure if you can really see that. But when I start you'll be able to tell it's kind of a Vaseline look on the top. But now when I stir around you will see that the bottom part is nice and white. So let's give it a stir. It means it's cooking. Make sure you get it every bit of it away from the edges. Stir it in nicely. Incorporate it together. I think that's good. To grab a different 
spatula this time since that one is going to have more active lie in it than this one. I don't want to keep switching them back and forth. Okay. Here, we'll go around the edges. And also, I take these cake knives. I'll zoom you out a little bit. And they're nice and flat. This is a Wilton cake knife. You can use whatever you like. Some people use a butter knife, but I'm running around the edges to make sure there's no soap so you can see the little pieces of soap that are kind of drying out on the edges. You want to get those off of the edges and you kind of move them back into the soap. And I usually just scrape them. And you just kind of stir them back in. Do that. Put that back to cook it again. Alright, let's go back over here. I'm out a little. You have to excuse my mess. I went yard selling today and got a bunch of stuff and I kind of brought it in here and set some of it around. And I went to Walmart and got those molds. think we might be good. I might try it anyway. I hope this is not going to mess me up on my, I'm probably going to have to cut my bars thicker because I use some of this soap, which I don't usually do. I usually use the whole 78 ounces of oils to fill my mold so um I'm probably I'm gonna be a little bit short I'm not sure how much because I used enough like I said to do two good sized pumpkins four little pumpkins and then my husband's shaving bar we'll see how that works usually I just I now, I hate to say this, but usually I just buy them. But I'm going to kind of start playing with that, and at least I can make those for him. And I don't know what's in them. I need to look at the recipe of the one that we've been buying. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway. We'll see if it's not quite thick enough. All right. I'm going to move this down here so you can see it better. Okay. And I'm going to make sure my little pieces are in there. And I'm going to pour it. Let's see how this works. Take this rag. do is I'm just going to pour it straight in there and hope that it's not going to pour out. Make sure those are pushed down nice and nicely. Oh, and I'm dripping down the floor. Good thing about the cold process is that it's really easy to get in the mold. Like I said, be careful, don't get this on your hands. I'm sure I have it on my hands. Uh, I just, it just doesn't tend to burn me like it does some people and I've actually splattered the lye water on me 
And yeah, you could feel it, but it didn't create a red, a red place. It didn't create a sore. But now some people have actually got it on themselves and it's created sores. So you have to be careful. I'm making a mess here. Mm, not really, but a little mess. More than more so than what I'm used to with hot process. I usually try to make sure I get it all out. No wonder I see a lot of the suckers don't really I mean they try to get what they can, but they don't really worry about getting all of it out. That's about it. Alright, so that there. I'm going to hmm. I'm used to raking and putting it down in there, but I don't know how that's gonna work. Just bump it. What I'll do is I'll put this on the floor. You won't be able to see me. Make sure that all the and that's I do that with hot process. I don't really know that I have to do it with the cold process. It's not really laying quite right right here in the corner that corner either so what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to have to cut cut them out why don't we clean up the edge just a little I'm going to have to play around with this. Let me throw this one in the trash. Another one. We'll go ahead and wipe up the edge so I won't get it on while I'm handling it. So please just wear gloves until you're sure that on the you're not worried about how you handle it. Um, all right, I'm just going to set this out of the way. Hmm. I've got a clean place to do it. So, I usually put it down here, so I'm going to move the stuff. I'm usually not this disorganized. But making the cold process so it's just different. It's not what I'm used to. I'm gonna set these molds up here. That has the little pumpkins. Probably should have put these on a tray. These have the big pumpkins. Mm. And I will move that again whenever I start cleaning it up. Alright, what I'm going to do is slide this stuff forward. And then I'm going to set this carefully at the back. And I'm through with that one. I'm actually 
through with this roll. Now what I'm going to have to do is get the other mold ready. Okay, push the mold here. Sorry. What I did is um, I cut the one big one piece and it was too long so the piece that I cut off of the end I'm using it to cut for the the end pieces. because I had it too. It does kind of have lines so you can kind of use those to go by. Not sure how this is going to work. This is an experiment. Somebody else out there may have already um, done this and may say, oh yeah, it works great. Um, so I'm just going to put those on the end. This one on the end. I kind of lean on that to begin with. Then I'm going to put this one in. And I used to tape them, and, but it, it was just um, aggravating to have to untape them. And this is just a little too long. So I'm going to cut off another little section. Because I don't want it to... I don't want it to be puckering out like the other one was. I'm just going to push it down in there. Make sure that it doesn't go below my board. Because I've cut it where it should be exactly right with it. And I just kind of do my fingernail down in there. This side's a little lower, so you know, that means I don't have it straight. Now this side's going down. Let's kind of push it. Yeah, that looks better. Then I go on the opposite side. Perfect. Now, that's perfect with the boards. And I'm just going to take the end. I pulled the end back out, but we'll take the end there, put it on the end. And when you start pouring the soap in, because this one you have to kind of, you pour or spoon, but you, you, have, you can plop it in with the spoon so you can make sure that the sides stay where they're supposed to be. So they'll kind of bend in to begin with and, and that's it. All right, so I've got that ready. And like I said, that's, I'll have to let you know how that works, how it holds up or how it works. And we'll wait and wait and see. Now, let's go back to the soap. Again, it's got the Vaseline look on the top. It's real shiny. And when you stir down in there, you know, you, you see you're getting white. But it is less white than it was. So that lets me know that it's almost where it needs to be. And this is just plain large soap with steric acid for hardness. 
and I do need to try a batch without it and just see how it does without the stearic acid. This lard is soft, it's a soft soap. It's not hard, I mean, a soft oil. It's not hard. So it may produce a soft soap. Alright, so now what I'll do to test it. Take my phenolphthalene. I can't even see the letters to, um, to spell it for you. I know it's P-H-E-N-O-L-P H maybe E-N-O L-E-A-I-N solution. I'm not not quite sure because it's rubbed off. Anyway, this is what I use to test the soap. So what I do is I make sure there's nothing on the counter, on the table. Put a white paper towel. Give the soap a nice stir so that I can mix it together. You don't want to just get the soap off the top. After you've stirred it, you're going to take a little glob of soap and you're going to place it on the napkin. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to drop four or five drops on top. And that usually ends up being more like six. I can already see it's turning a pink, so I know this soap is definitely not ready. And what that means is there is active light in the soap. There you go, you can see the pink. So that means it's not ready at all. Um, you don't want to put this back into the soap. You don't want to just throw this away. And what I'll do is let it let it cook for about 30 more minutes and then I'll test it again. Now if I'm not using the soap immediately, which I'm not, I don't have to let it cook all the way until it's, but I do want it definitely just a light pink. I don't want as much pink as I just saw. Because what happens when you cut it and you let the bars sit for a week to harden, and usually I don't sell it immediately because I already have containers of soap that are ready to go to like stores and things. Um, so this soap will just kind of sit on the table for a couple, probably three or four days, then it'll get bagged and it'll sit there for maybe a week before I need it. So. And then the heat, when you put it in the mold, it continues to do its thing because it's hot. So it's not like it stops cooking immediately. It's going to continue, continue to cook. But we are going to let it go for maybe at least another 30 minutes. And that's not working as well as I did. And then we're going to take it from there. So clean that off. In there. One thing I do like about dealing with the lard soap, the old-fashioned lard, is I'm not having to add any extra additives. I'm not adding essential oils. This is just a soap that, like your grandmama's soap, great-grandma, and it's not one that's going to have a bunch of additives. People that buy this, they want the exact... Not exact, but they want the type of large soap that the grandmother had. But I am thinking of making one with some other things besides just plain soap. But I do need to get this. So, get some of this um, boxed up. So I'll go ahead and let that still on low. I'm let that cook for about 30 more minutes and then I'm gonna bring you back okay we're back I'm going to take a look at the soap again 
again. Nice Vaseline look on the top. And when you move it, it's still nice and it's really, really shiny underneath. So, I know that we're getting there. Still have some white. It's okay. Let's stir it all in. I'm going to get everything incorporated together. The bottom, the sides, all with the top. I'm going to check it. It has that nice soap smell. It's just a different... It's a cooking soap smell. It smells good. So you can see, bring it in a little bit more. I'm going to actually put it in the center of the napkin if I can. Okay. All right now, I'm going to take five or six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, some people do one, they do two. It's kind of I usually take it, kind of smash it, and then look at it. It is still really, really pink, as you can tell. So that lets me know we're not ready. So I'm going to let it cook for maybe 30 more minutes again. And then I'm going to bring you back. Some will stir it really well, and we'll use icing spreader or the cake knife and get it off so you can see that the edges are like sticking. It's okay, it's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you don't want it to stay on the edges too long. I'm going to incorporate it back in. I just kind of do that and rake it down. And then stir it in. All right. Clean it off. Back over there. Run this around one time. Make sure everything's in the middle. Clean off my edges. Try to get this hard dried soap off of here. There you go. Or you put it back in there, it'll go ahead and finish cooking. I'll mix right back in with the other one. Special right here is about done. It's starting to like curl up on the end like that and crack. Probably have, I'll probably go ahead and throw it in the trash. After this time, All right, here we go. Cook. and if you'll show you this soap, piece of soap again, you can really see the red, the, the pink. So we know, I know that there's active lye in there, so it's definitely not ready. So I will bring you back in about 30 minutes. Okay, I'm back. And not quite really sure if it's been 30 minutes or longer, but I did clean up. As you can see, I have been really, really busy. I got the soaps over the ones that I put in the little molds over there up out of the way so the children can't get them. And I cleaned up the dishes that were left. And I cleaned most of everything off the table except for the things that I really was going to need. Okay, 
Now, I started stirring it I, just the top before I remember. Then I remembered I didn't uh, turn the camera on. But it's still nice and Vaseline looking, shiny, a little bit translucent. And I think we're, we're, we're reaching the end. So I'm going to stir it. Give it a nice stir. Okay, I'm back. Um, what I did was, my husband decided that he wanted us to go get grab a bite to eat. And I've never done this before. But I put the crock pot on warm because I still wanted it to cook some. Because I knew that we were still getting a, a little pink. And so I turned it on warm. We went and ate real quick. We were gone probably an hour. And then I came back. It was still warm, but what I did is um, I added a little bit of sugar water, which increases the um, the bubbling in the soap, uh, makes it um, bubble more. And I added some of that so that it would would bubble more. So I added that in, mixed it in, and I am I wasn't going to test it, but I think I am going to test it. Um, just to make sure, you know, I don't want to, maybe I did something wrong. And I want to make sure that, that, um, that there, there's any lie in it. Okay. You can see that if there's any in it it's not not enough for me to worry about right at this point but I'll it is a little little I think I can see a little tiny shade of pink but what I'll do is I will let this soak cure um and then I'll test the bar and I'll see if um it's if it's got any active light in it And I'm just going to scrape these dried places away. And what I'll do is just kind of tuck them down into the soap. And the soap's going to stay hot for quite some time. So they will, um, they will melt back down, down. And it'll be fine. All right, let's see how hot this is. Oh, yeah, it's still hot. So what I do is I just take a towel, one of my old towels, and I kind of hook it on my hip right here and I kind of pull it up like this and I just set the pot on the towel so that it's not burning me and, and I'm going to I just kind of lean over some people spoon in I don't like to spoon in it just takes a while um, and I'm sure that one day I'll have to, I won't have a choice but to spoon in. At this point I like to lift them up. If you're noticing, I'm just kind of pushing the soap down toward the ends and carefully making sure that it's holding my ends in place. Okay. Now this one I shouldn't have any trouble with it running out of the mold. Because it's 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 thick. Getting some heat. Looks like it's hot right where my my Fitbit is on my arm, but not sure. So going to do that and then what I usually do is I run make sure I get all that off the bottom I run my cake 
knife around. And I just rake it in. Like I said, I'm going to push these under and make sure that they get down into the hot soak so that it will melt back. And then what I do is when I do a hot process, and I will say when I cleaned up from the cold process soap, it was harder to clean up. I actually got it on my hands, and it's just oily. This is already soap. So what I will do is I will just um, sit this. You can see there's not much left in there, but what I'll do is sit it in the sink, and then I'll fill it up with water tomorrow, and then I'll use that to wash anything that's left over but now I've already washed a lot of stuff but I'll wash anything that's left over okay now what I do here is I go ahead and I get off what I can off of my spoon and you don't have to do this but then what you end up doing is having to scrape it off or either you're just putting it in the okay there's what the two soaps look like these are the same soaps they're large soaps Except one I did put ceric acid in, the other one I didn't. But th there's no diff shouldn't be any difference really in them other than the hardness. But if you'll notice, the one that's hot processed, you know, looks a little crumbly kind of on the top. It's not crumbly, but it's just got a rough texture to it. The one that was cold processed has a nice flat top. And I did the little, um, little, little design in it using um, a little chopstick. And I just kind of designed it. That way, you know, you have a little design on top. But, so, I'll bring you back and show you these. But I am excited to see how they, how the cold process one does. So, whenever I slice them, I'll bring you back and let you see um, how different they look when they're sliced. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave me a comment. And make sure to like my video. Thanks.